Hello, my name is Bernd Oppermann and I'm professor for private law and commercial law at Leibniz University Hannover, Germany. Recently, in recent years, uh, we have published uh, some books about automated driving. So I thought it might be for this format a um, good idea and hopefully meets your interest to talk about market law aspects of automatic and autonomous driving. Recent developments in artificial intelligence research and data-driven technologies as autonomous driving lead to new challenges for the law. Our approach was concerned with questions when autonomous machines are safe enough to justify their admission on national and on international level of human liability in private and criminal law, as well as ethical implications. A deeper analysis, however, must envisage matters of consumer law and data protection, modifies distribution con and contracts, and has competitive consequences for market law. The idea and the technology of autonomous motor vehicles receives public attention. The fact that a machine may be a driver in the foreseeable future seems to result through the interpolation of already existing programs, which let the expectations rise. The European Parliament has made recommendations regarding robotics. The EU Commission presently works on the regulation for artificial intelligence. However, as far as the tendency to expand and link driver-resistant systems to autonomous driving is concerned, the number of their opponents is limited, while many advantages are named for the autonomy of driving by the help of automatic machines. These include increasing road safety and other transport planning benefits, uh, resolving challenges of aging societies, climate protection, health protection and efficiency, as well as commuters' preferences. Public concern refers to the broadly debated question whether, in terms of driving and automated vehicle, the driver's liability can legally be assumed. It is by no means absurd to discuss such consequences, since the position that in future the driving system itself should be treated like a driver corresponds at least to a minority vote only on the recent amendment to the 19. 68 Vienna Convention on Road Traffic. Even more, reflections about automated driving may lead to philosophical considerations. An astonishing amount of work has already been done in the ethics of automats that would eventually be realized a dilemma situation in which an automat should find itself when it comes to weighting one probable traffic victim against another forms the starting point of many practical philosophical doctrines, but I don't want to deal with them today. For private law, the liability-related approach was fueled by the first accidents of vehicles during the autom automation phase. As the level of automation increases in future, it becomes more likely that technical errors will occur. As may have happened in one of incidences. In the near future, however, the, the development of semi-autonomous driver assistance systems do not call for major legis legislative activity, in my opinion at least. Neither does the vehicle have to become a driver, nor do far-reaching consequences in law and ethics uh, appear necessary. Nevertheless, some national adjustments appeared on international and national uh, context. In order to talk about automated driving, it is necessary to classify the levels of driving automation. Uh, commonly, there are five levels of automation uh, used. I think my uh, 
the dear audience will know them already. It's level zero for no automation, functionally specific automation, level one combined functional automation, level two limited autonomy, level three and fully autonomous driving level four. Uh, there might be uh, other definitions in my book I have used a uh, more sophisticated one, but uh, it is not necessary for our purpose. It's just important to distinguish these levels when you talk about autonomous driving. Okay, let me pick out a few aspects of contractual tort and product liability before I turn to uh, market law. Uh, the German legislator has implemented the relevant international agreements among others. According to the German Road Traffic Act, the operation of a motor vehicle by means of a highly and fully automated driving function is permitted, provided the function is used as intended. However, not only sufficient technical requirements must be met, but also demands that the automatic system can be overridden or deactivated by the driver at any time. In addition, the driver must be warned in good time if his intervention is required or her intervention, of course. In other words, the legal model is about partially automated driving under the responsibility of the driver, it means level one or two. Although the driver may turn away from the traffic during the automated driving, he or she is obliged by first to take control as soon as the system asks him to do so. In particular, one who activates a highly or fully automated driving, let's say of level three function, for um, uh, vehicle control during the automatic operating phase is also considered to be the driver. Thereafter, in consequence, opinions that want to award to the automat itself the legal characteristics of the driver are pointless. The relevant bill was criticized due to a fear of dangerous interferences with road traffic. Parallel to the first legal embedding of using assistance systems and a certain foundation of development towards autonomous driving in my country, the subject has not only come into the public eye more intensively through marketing and preliminary works, uh, but also through the courage, courageous, even daring implementation of innovations. The preliminary works concern, for example, existing test tracks for experimenting with independent vehicles in traffic, such as here in Lower Saxony, the test track, um, but the topic was brought to the public's consciousness in a much more spectacular way via first accident with partly automatic vehicles. In addition, to uh, much vaunted to much vaunted dangers, excuse me, the benefits of automated driving are highlighted. While a widely deployable driverless autonomous motor vehicle still seems utopian, given the current state of art at least, one might think about the legal consequences of different levels of auto autonomous driving nevertheless. Um, another aspect is product liability. Uh, civil law aspect, of course, which could play an important role when it comes to further progress in automated motor vehicles, let's say from level three on. The question whether the driver or the, the producer has um, a driving automat should be legally responsible in the first place is strongly focused on. Unless a pure insurance solution is pursued, not only the producer or the independent electronics and software supplier should be charged with any risk for the new technology through direct claims. This would be a barrier to innovation, investment and competition. Moreover, such a rigorous solution could create problems with the free movement of goods in the European Union internal market law, except in the unlikely event that all member states wanted only producers to be responsible. Conversely, it seems problematic to let the driver carry all the risk alone during an automation phase, even if the monitoring requirement at level two and the override option at level three still exists. 
A further aspect in that respect should be mentioned. Insurance law has an outstanding importance in the field of non-contractual liability, of course, seen from this side, the existing stock of regulations for the requirement of the first three automation levels seems to be at least adaptable by the development of legal practice. A word uh, on data protection for automated driving. Already, at a relatively low level of automation, the combination of driver assistance systems leads to the increasing significance of data protection. On first sight, one has to deal with the data protection and IP law based on the planned connection of driving systems. Thus, large amounts of information about vehicle use, preferred stays and traffic behavior may be amassed. It is unclear who has the right to access uh, the data that arise in connected, partially automated driving or even full automated driving and who may distribute it or even use it for its own purpose. Undoubtedly, the data on the user's objectified preferences are of great interest to some market players, especially these who deal with data at present, and even more to data collectors and users and form their own economic value. It is widely requested to limit the anticipated data floods of cars. Therefore, basic rules for data and consumer protection in the area of digital mobility would be necessary in order to guarantee transparency and a high level of protection. It is claimed that vehicle producers would have to be obliged in cooperation with retailers to provide comprehensive information about which data would be generated in which way, for what purpose and where. The consumer should know who would get access to it and at which point it will be deleted. Data protection and data security should be all Already taken into account during admission and later checks. These references may suffice because privacy, IP and licensing issues are not in the focus um, of my speech today. The matter is even more complex, which makes it interesting for considerations on consumer protection, unfair competition and market structure law. The type of software use and its update may require differentiation between the producer of the vehicle and the one of the software. It is questionable how far third-party software may be used. Furthermore, it is necessary to prevent unwanted third-party programming activities such as hacking, a horror scenario, of course, for automated cars. A number of problems arise in terms of data security, process-related and commercial exploitation of data. If one would want to express this via some property concept, property on data, of course, then the question would be to whom the data belong. It may be necessary to redesign purchase, leasing or license agreement with the end user. The question of admissibility of new terms and conditions not least from the point of view of consumer protection, will arise. There are also other implications for distribution, such as sales agent and dealer contracts. In addition, development costs coupled with strong competition will create market incentive to merge companies, which in turn may negatively impact competition. Conversely, if suppliers become more established and startups get a chance in relation to the uh, so-called original equipment manufacturers, uh, commonly uh, um, uh, uh, expressed with OEMs, um, it may be positive for competition. The concept of market information leads beyond the narrowed question of who has legally to be ruling over the data resulting from automatic driving and um, is there a right to integrity or privacy of this data on the part of the user. Market information as a plain information about the product and its functioning, about the user, about the production and the procurement and distribution channels is of course a generalizing term. Market information becomes legally relevant in the civil liability forms as outlined before. Moreover, it also plays a role in consumer protection and competition law. 
let's uh, get to some other aspects of consumer protection in relation to automated driving. Uh, there is first the notion of market asym asymmetries. If there were um, if there were to be economically sensible modes of justifying consumer protection as a legal instrument, other than balancing a more typified weakness of a treaty side the consumers, then the notion of information asymmetry might well contribute to state interference in private law via consumer protection, as it is debated the case in Europe. Producers or OEMs and, uh, where appropriate, distributors are fully aware of a product, its components and interconnections, as opposed to the purchaser or user for whom buying a vehicle typically is not an everyday occurrence in its role to a consumer. A focus on discrepancy by typified duties and rights of both market sites is indicated. There is political demand for more consumer protection in the context of automated driving, as often as its actual content remains indeterminate. A legal starting point is the trivial idea that any assistance system restricts the user's freedom of choice, because the sense of assisted driving is that relevant decisions are partially relocated to the machine. Initially, determining this interface in the interest of a consumer has also the consequences for the insurance and data protection law, as well as the separate question of who is entitled to the use of the resulting wealth of data and to whom the knowledge um, generated thereby is attributed. Other civil law aspects in that context are uh, of course, the division of contractual risks and contractual liability on both market sites in respect of the data. And um, a new aspect is the discussion whether the abandonment of robotics might be treated in future as negligent behavior in a contractual relationship. This idea is not absurd. Just think about wearing the security belt or not, which uh, changes, of course, uh, the notion of uh, uh, liability if there happens an accident. Okay, let's turn to the law of market behavior. Uh, first, um, unfair competition law. With regard to the individual behavior of uh, professional players on the supplier side, or merchants, <laughs> further aspects arise, namely the distribution, the production by the OEMs, the supplier or the software provider. One has therefore to talk about unfair competition law, which is at least for the business to consumer, the so-called B2C relationship, closely interlinked to consumer law. There are court cases concerning internet use which show re um, relevance for vehicles of automation in level two already. For navigation devices, for example, the design of preset algorithm automatic decisions to contact certain hotels first or to favor certain service stations could matter. In internet and IT law too, technical development initially entails certain challenges for market behavior. And consumer law, which is a matter of national unfair competition law and competition procedure without requiring any legislative landmarks. Starting point must be the question of whether the design of the algorithm, if it covers the OEM or a software producer, constitutes an unfair behavior of that market participant. Thus, the effect on the consumer comes into consideration as far as he is significantly impaired in the freedom of decision and behavior, for example, via the offering of certain groups of gas stations or hotels, um, etc., by the automat, without giving room to competitors. Due to his lack of information about the machine's algorithm, the user is unable to take a rational decision based on relevant information vis-à-vis -vis the gas station, hotel, um, or restaurant recommendation. There are, of course, other aspects of competition law, 
the competition law of market structure. Let's face, uh, first of all, horizontal corporations, horizontal relationships on a market level. It is obvious that the concentration of various assistance systems uh, carries per definition a certain inclination to cooperation within itself and thus has an impact on the markets. Such cooperation could take the form of cartels or cartel-like form of cooperation such as joint ventures or private-public partnerships, PPP, or it could even lead to the various versions of a merger. The interaction might take place between the competitors, for example in the horizontal relationship or um, with the suppliers or distribution, uh, take the place in the vertical relationship of the market stages. Even if the investment intensive introduction of new technology seems to involve the creation of larger units, by concentrating within the horizontal relationship only cooperations between individual independent competitors are possible in this respect. However, the outsourcing of innovative sectors such as battery or fuel cell production, electric driving systems or digital networking products to supply um, to suppliers seem to play a more important role so that questions of vertical concentration or at least changes in existing market conditions come into focus. Examples here are navigation maps, uh, purchase corporations, research and development corporations uh, cooperating on, on different level uh, of the market. So in vertical relationships, in procurement and distribution, um, it could be more diverse than for horizontal relationships um, to find the effects of developmental stages of autonomous driving uh, in this uh, vertical level of uh, the motor vehicle market, namely as producers and their customers, so distribution, as well as their suppliers, procurement, are concerned. Currently, the outsourcing of innovative sectors such as battery or fuel cell production, electric driving systems or products of digital networking to suppliers is to be noted. Particularly in the battery business, some existing suppliers see considerable development opportunities not only in relation to their customers. This also applies in the connection of commercial vehicles to digital in innovations such as electrified axle or to the digitized replacement of the rear view mirror, to give an old example. Even more, however, Outsourcing the innovative sectors such as battery or fuel cell production, electric driving system or digital networking product products to suppliers seem to play a role. In terms of navigation and valid parking, even smaller market participants and suppliers are establishing themselves in opposite to the OEMs. Still in vertical relationship, in interdependence is not immediately visible. However, the legal approach is of relevance, but if, uh, if a contract of purchasing, leasing, franchising, licensing, or any other eligible one across the market stages, provided it contains clauses that are capable of influencing the competition conditions in the relevant sales or procurement market in a relevant manner, um, analysts assume that the fundamental structures of the vehicle value chain remain unchanged even with increasing automation. The balance of power between the players could shift nevertheless significantly. In particular, the concentration process in the car aftermarket reportedly would increase. Examples, other examples than the car aftermarket are the OEMs in car production or the kickback programs in distributing navigation devices or the so-called best price clauses for the specialists. Insofar as the law of obligations is affected in a vertical relationship, new clauses are considered both between the professionally involved parties, such as manufacturers or OEMs, possibly differentiated to the software producers, authorized dealers and 
suppliers in regard of their market counterpart and contractual counterpart in obligations. These new agreements must find themselves within the framework of general contract law, which includes not least clause control and in the case of B2C businesses, the consumer protection instruments. In a further legal dimension related to the market structure, this also has consequences for antitrust law, provided that such contracts are suitable for influencing competition vertically to the market stages. The vertical block exemption regulations, which govern in EU and national competition law for vertical relationships, should be modernized in that respect. In structural competition law, still in structural competition law, the most important aspects for automated driving relate to market abuse supervision, however. So it's Article 102 uh, of the European uh, Treaty of the Technical Part. It concerns, for example, market supervision regarding precious services, the abuse of market power. Cases on market power abuse provide an idea of this aspect's economic dimension. Especially in the development of driver assistance systems, the abuse of market power under the perspective of relative market power concepts exists at present already, not to forget the role of intermediaries and internet platforms, at least if one uh, believes in relative uh, market power concepts as we do in Germany. It's not everywhere the case. In other cases, aspects of data protection law might constitute the starting point of the uh, allegation of misuse of terms, which as such might even be considered as legally acceptable. However, market-dominant undertakings are subject to special duties based on the mentioned, pre-mentioned Article 102 of TFEU and provisions of national law. Recently, the market power of intermediaries and platforms, internet platforms, enjoy a broad specific concern, especially in my country. The measures of the courts of the EU and national lawmakers are remarkable in that respect. I might finish my brief uh, remarks, sorry, I think I'm over time already, um, with uh, the following, let's say, summary or final remarks. Um, a motor vehicle or automobile that fulfills the name's promise and might move without a driver initiates public debates. The intelligent driving system must allegedly defy traditional questions of ethics or practical philosophical doctrines. Actually, this has little to do with the current state of development of the possibilities of combined assistance systems, which may be connected beyond the individual vehicle. The individual responsibility of the driver is to be questioned in the near future in view of partially automated processes. For a clear picture, it is therefore necessary to distinguish between the stages of development of automation. For the foreseeable future, however, a provisional synopsis of the relevant legal issues will only result in a clearer need for new legislative activities. On the contrary, phrasable marketing campaigns of private individuals should not lead to precipitous, even uh, nonsensical legislative reaction. So it shouldn't be overdone, briefly. <laughs> um, of practical importance is uh, the owner liability according to uh, national German law as the German Road Traffic Act, because it provides an essential background for the liability issues of all automation levels. The fact that it seems to be difficult uh, to find a responsible driver with a higher level of automation of the assistance systems is thus relevant because of the driver liability of the same enactment and because of legal, other legal sources for liability, torts especially. The German law was criticized because the last amendment leaves the responsibility at the driver's side even for automation. The concept of market information leads beyond the narrow question of data property and data protection. Market information is a plain information about the product and its function, about the user, the product and the procurement and distribution channels are of course a generalizing term. It becomes quite important for civil liability as outlined before, however it plays 
as well a major role in consumer protection and in competition law. The same applies with regard uh, to the black box uh, solutions and the interlinkage by internet for the util utilization of data streams and questions of data access, which could necessitate further legislative measures in data protection law. If, however, public law such as traffic law or data protection law is not affected, the detailed adjustments in the contractual liability and tort uh, law as well as any other new development will be governed by contract law will initially, uh, initially be made by contract clauses and judicial case law. The design through innovation does not immediately require completely new statutory law. The growing automation of thriving has structural consequences for the production, distribution and subcontracting. The needs for new technologies will require a high degree of cooperation for even large, larger players, established larger players, sorry, in research and development, but also in the design of specific investment intensive markets. In addition, counter tendencies are conceivable that certain segments for certain products of automation work better with the competition of much smaller units uh, of action and even startups. Also, in the vertical relationship, mobility, autonomous driving, digitalization and electrification will lead to a substantive change with the automotive aftermarket. For example, within the automotive new car markets, um, ejectant markets regarding part manufacturers, so-called IAM, service stations or used car dealers. An increased concentration process in the automotive aftermarket is a possible consequence. Similar details may be noted about individual market behavior beyond structural issues. Due to the increased competitive pressure, consideration should be given to individualized judicial control of fair market behavior in the European member states, including the context of market information. There are already some interesting relevant discussions to be found in the present, although not being a specific feature of the complex driver assistance systems. Finally, for all market-related legal acts and decisions, including consumer protection, legal harmonization within the internal market of the European Union must be ensured. Due to prevailing European harmonization, it would not be possible to regulate things just for a member state, instead for the inner market of the EU uh, as a whole. After all, we don't want to change our car if we pass uh, national borders on the common market. Thank you very much.